Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Hello, hello, good evening, wherever you're watching me from. Welcome to this broadcast. As usual, I encourage you to share this broadcast. It's very, very important that as many people get to hear what I have to say on the latest update on uh, Pamela and 12 other survivors of the kidnapping. Now, you also know, or you know, that um, there was um, a report that two other people had been killed in that uh, kidnapping and that they had been buried in the same pre premises as that now i'd like to inform you that uh, police have carried out a thorough dig up around those premises and so far they have proved futile they haven't found any evidence of uh, anybody having been buried at those premises however the search and the investigation continues because it could be likely that those people could have been buried elsewhere or maybe they were not even killed so there is all this mystery surrounding whether or not there are those two victims that were killed if they are dead or not but of course we continue to wait from the police they are the ones who are leading these investigations and in due course we'll get to know whether or not indeed there are those uh, two other victims who are missing now the reason that i've um, i've decided to have this broadcast regarding this subject which has been widely discussed and many of you have so many questions and so many interpretations of what it is uh, what was the motive of these kidnappers if there was anybody else behind uh, these uh, i'll call them boys because they're very young these boys that were in the forefront of these hideous crimes now i want to address this to you my fellow citizens my friends my comrades my followers this is not the time to relax this is the time to be vigilant because we have to understand how did these things happen because we had so many questions when all these kidnappings and disappearances were happening we had so many questions and some of you are still asking to say wait a minute i thought we only had two or three uh booth operators who were kidnapped who were looking for but how come the number escalated to 13 that is also a question that i'm asking how come we didn't hear about these other kidnappings by the way nine out of the 13 victims of the kidnappings or should they call them survivors were nursing students uh, four of them were booth operators of course one of the most famous incidences or the most famous kidnapping was that of pamela because we actually saw a video that was posted by her kidnappers where she was hit with an iron bar on the forehead and she bled so uh, basically pamela has been the face of this issue of um, kidnappings and um, we are yet to discover more of what uh, transpired in that uh, house of horror where she was kept for six long months now i would like especially you students students if you are listening to me please female students and i'm focusing on, on females because females are the targets females are the, the targets we have no concrete report of um, a, a male that was kidnapped except that one who they who we suspect or we are told was killed whose body has never been found we don't even know if there's a report from some families who are missing a male person uh, we don't know that so we can't confirm on that but by and large the victims of these kidnappings have been ladies that's why i want to speak to ladies and to share with you including the male folk because you have have your mothers who are women you have your daughters you have your cousins you have your girlfriends you have your wives those are the potential victims of kidnappings and what i'm saying is that let's not relax because we don't know how wide and deep this syndicate is we don't know how wide and deep this uh, and deep this syndicate is and from the time i had my last video several people have called me not from zambia but from outside zambia and in particular from uh, nigeria 
in Nigeria and Tanzania this thing has been going on for a very long time for a very long time and I suspect strongly to say that the influences of these kidnappings this couch of kidnappings is coming from Nigeria and uh, Tanzania because that is where these uh, cultures are so highly uh, ritualistic if it is in Tanzania it is even worse because there albinos are like uh, diamond uh, albino packs uh, I'm talking about human body parts there it has advanced to a, to a point where people are kidnapped for human body parts not just the uh, rituals where people are not like uh, killed there it's rough if you have heard of the Ibadan uh, uh, forest massacre in Nigeria this is what was called the Ibadan forest massacre this was a wide and deep satanic syndicate I'll call it that where people were being kidnapped in their hundreds and body parts were missing what happened when they kidnap you you don't come back alive unless I otherwise and they would kill you and remove your body parts while you are still alive yeah? they will remove your body parts while you are still alive and breathing and we are told there's a wide market for such kind of things so what we are experiencing here in Zambia is like the level one of this syndicate yeah? the highest level is where they remove but here they just uh, kidnap you put you in a coffin or whatever it is that they were doing with those girls we do not know so we have to understand and we have to be wary and we have to nip this thing in the bud and that's why we are saying and we are calling upon our law enforcement officers to take this thing very seriously some of you that have even been calling for a death sentence i support you because we have to set a very strong deterrent against this kind of thing because if we if we take it so lightly believe you me sooner or later we are going to hear another kidnapping and perhaps this time we may not be so fortunate as we were here with the last case where we found almost all the survivors alive so let's now analyze the nature and the tactics of kidnappings the nature and the tactics of kidnappings which were used by these kidnappers and share this with your friends share this in your church congregations share this in your schools because this this was no forced kidnapping that's the first thing we must know in all the cases of the kidnappings there was an established relationship if you heard the ministry statement from the minister of home affairs and internal security honorable jack Mimbo, he did say that in all these cases there was an established relationship meaning that means these people that were being kidnapped were not total strangers they were not just gotten and bundled in the car let's go no they were lured they were lured into kidnapping the first case of faith miluti the first case of faith miluti the one who was who disappeared before even pamela was 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 captured faith miluti was kidnapped under the guise of who escort us to a police station and what i used to talk about i used to say that some of these kidnappers who used to disguise themselves as law enforcement officers that's how they got faith miluti they disguise themselves as officers they say we want to investigate you for a loss of a phone miluti that's how she was captured that's how she was taken her baby the one she was with was hammered on the head and left for dead uh, somewhere in woodlands she was picked up in woodlands the baby that is and thankfully she survived that was the third one. Second one the famous pamela pamela was kidnapped by her friends schoolmates former schoolmates one of those guys or is it two of them were her former schoolmates that's why it was so easy those that saw, those that saw her for the last time when she was leaving cairo road opposite shop right there to being lured by her kidnappers they said that when you saw her it didn't look like she was forcibly grabbed or she was just normal she just went with them because the road and they got into a taxi those one of those were, were actually a former classmate or maybe a friend and there are some of you who, who are facebook investigators you've already gone to the pages of uh, this same guy i don't know what his name is you then screenshotted where pamela had a short communication in the comments where it, she said oh looking good this guy said thank you so there was a relationship there and that was a betrayal of relationship the highest betrayal of relationship who would ever think that your own classmate would kidnap you who would ever think that your own boyfriend would kidnap you 
this is where now you need to open your minds especially you ladies because the modus operandi or the operating system of these kidnappers was such that they got those people whom they knew who they had a relationship or who they were starting a relationship with that's how pamela was gotten i'm sure she was also shocked beyond belief when she discovered that actually she'd been captured betrayed by her former schoolmates the other one was the Paxina Chanda. It was all the same. Now, let's get to the nine others, the nursing students. How did these guys capture nine nursing students? Nine nursing students. And the whole country didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. You didn't know about it. We don't know if the police knew about it. Actually, we were blindsided on these nine. How did these guys get nine students? I'll tell you how they did it. And I got this from um, first-hand information. One of the mothers to the uh, girls that was kidnapped. And this is where they made a mistake. Because I think they went into overdrive mode of getting these, um, these nursing students. I don't know if nursing students are like the most vulnerable. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. And I don't want, I'm not trying to demean or undermine nursing students, but I think uh, you need to be more careful. Students in general, ladies, I think we need to be more security conscious. We need to be more security conscious. The f they first picked up uh, one of the nurses, I don't know what her name, but the way they did it is like they were communicating with her. There was some kind of uh, arrangement or relationship, oh, let's, uh, let's link up, you know how it is. Uh, they propose you, I don't know if it's physically, you meet at the mall or you meet on Facebook, whatever you meet, for, you, you meet from. And this is where we have to be careful because here on Facebook, we have monsters. It's been proven to say these guys were heavy users of Facebook. You would never suspect to say that they, would be, they, they, they were the monsters that they turned out to be. So they got some one of these uh, this nurse, this nurse, they lured her, she, she went with them willingly. Maybe there was some, some kind of relationship there. So she, she, she also didn't know. It's like she was also uh, betrayed, you know. The relationship there which was established was just to lure her to be gotten like that. That's how she was captured. And now all the ducks, yeah, to use an English expression, all the ducks now were lined up in a row. It's like the first one that they got. Besides, these are nursing students from one institution, by the way. The way they did now, when they got one, and this is what I was taught, they would use, they would capture one nurse or nursing student and then they would tell her, can you call your friend and tell her we are having fun? Are you listening? They will get her, they will capture her. Then they, they will use her very phone and they tell her, can you call your friend and tell her, ah, kuno boy, boy, these are the words, chalila kuno boy, we are having fun, come and join us. That's how all those eight fell in. Hook, line, and sink. You see how simple the strategy was. How sophisticated these guys were. Because they, they reached a the point where if, they, if we keep on getting, you know, kidnapping here and there, maybe we might be caught sooner or later. So they just used one. They got one next student. And they got the rest. And you know what's, <laughs> what's interesting is that they were all from the same boarding house. All of them, all the nine, were from the same boarding house. So they got the first one, then they told the, they told the first one, can you call your friend, tell her we are having fun, she'll come. Then they also call another one, call your friend. The other one, call your friend, we are having fun, call your friend. And you know how this, how friendship is, oh, my friend has invited me for chills, let's go for chills. <laughs> they ended up all being in the same hammer house of horror. I call it that because that was a house of horror. So, this is something that we have learned about these kidnapping tactics. It's not a crude tactics. The, the usual tactics that we know about kidnapping, uh, with the ones we watch on movies or the one we hear in these other countries, those are like forcible kidnappings where people come, guns blazing, or is it with knives, and then they'll just grab you, bundle you, or maybe suffocate you, blind... No. These ones we just used the, the the relationships, the social relationships that they had with these people and lured them like that. They knew one or another of these uh, girls. So my advice to students, and this is what I have always said. This is what I always always said. 
don't allow yourself don't allow yourself to be drawn or to be taken elsewhere by a total stranger you have just known her, him or her today let's go for chills you go alone and I, I, know, I, know, I know it's difficult you know people relationships nowadays it's like they happen at the speed of light they happen at the speed of light in 12 hours you're already together having chills and sleepovers it's very dangerous it's now become very dangerous you can't trust anyone you can't trust your friend who you're with at high school you can't trust your your so-called boyfriend who has just proposed to you so it's become risky and i don't have the best advice on how you can contain that because at the end of the day what we are going to be saying is that no more relationships no more visiting your boyfriends i don't know what kind of a world it would be I don't know what kind of a world it would be. It would be a world or a Zambia without relationships where there is no trust. But at least we have learned something. And that's something that we have learned is that these guys used friends to call a friend of a friend. Call a friend of a friend. And that's how they were captured. Lined up like ducks in a row. And they were all from the same boarding house. And that's why it was very difficult even for school authorities to figure out you know for school authorities they don't inspect boarding houses and in this board some of these boarding houses it's like mind your own business you can have a semi-detached there's a boarding house there's a boarding house there there's a room and you know how it is it's bed spaces maybe in a room you're five you're six or, or, or you're nine if the other ones nine the nine disappear the other guys in the other room won't even bother ah, these guys are ah, they play a lot maybe they have gone somewhere yeah? and you know how students are they can go see a vonga one week yeah, they can go Livingstone one week. Yeah? You can go in City Copper Belt, wherever you the shoes are. Yeah? Wherever the guys take you, one week. They will say, ah, you saw your friends at the boarding house. You won't know that you have disappeared or you have been kidnapped. Because they, maybe they have gone together. But they, all of them are not there. Ah, like the boss. That was the difficult. That was the difficult. But again, it also exposes the kind of weak social ties or the weak social fabric that we have as a, as a country because we don't have this uh, mind thy neighbor kind of attitude especially here in Lusaka you can be neighbors with somebody for 10 years 10 years you've never you've never spoken to them you don't even know what they look like you don't even know what they look like so this shows a weakness in our social fabric because a whole boarding house girls disappear nobody even knows about it nobody even knows about it it is a very 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 uh, terrible thing but all in all you we need to be alive to how these girls were gotten because we shouldn't fall prey you ladies girls student nurses or whatever students you, sh you should always be very very security conscious at least if you are going somewhere let someone know where you're going and who you're going to see they should know where you are at all times because when you are when you don't come back somebody must be able to raise an alarm to say oh my friend said she should be going she said she'll be coming back but she hasn't come back i'm trying to call her her phone is off and please if your friend has gone out and she calls you to say come and join me i'm having chills at the house <laughs> it's a red flag never dare never dare because you don't know what you'll be walking into you think you're walking into chills can't you're walking into a lion's den or a house of horror as it were we shouldn't be so comfortable and sit on our laurels and think to say oh the kidnappings are over who said they're over they are not over there not they're not far from it we need to raise our awareness we need to raise our vigilance we need to raise our sense of community we need to have a way i don't know how but we need to find a way whereby we know our neighbors we know who stays where we check upon our neighbors or maybe some kind of inspection committee in, in streets which every often goes around knocking calls for for meetings to know who's who where do you live who do you live with maybe that way we'll be we won't have a situation where we were looking for pamela all over the show you know we we didn't even know where to start from because she was just nearby here with a lot of neighbors around 
Number two, our law enforcement agencies. There is no doubt that our law enforcement agencies have got the desire to work. They've got the energy, they've got the drive, but the capacity, the capacity of our law enforcement agencies leaves much to be desired. I can tell you, this issue of kidnappings, they were, these, these criminals were always using phones, but we don't know if they, if Zikta, I don't know Zikta, you're working in collaboration with the, uh, with, the, with the police, I don't know if they succeeded in tracing a single phone at all. I don't know. Other cases, people in South, the president there, they will be found instantly. But these guys, the kidnappers, I don't know. They were not found. I have one or two friends. There are two, actually, three other cases that I was uh, following up. Remember, just after the elections, there was this syndicate of bus drivers who were kidnapping uh, passengers. They would, they would pretend to be bus drivers and conductors. All of a sudden, you are on a bus, you'll be kidnapped, you'll be dumped somewhere. Two cases happened. These two cases, um, the, the ones that were attacked, thankfully they were not killed, but they lost their phones. Two, I followed up that case all the way up to the police command. The case was assigned to some officers to track and trace those phones. Up to now, no phone has ever been found. What kind of technology are we using in Zambia? I think it's high time we invested in a superior technology because this syndicate of kidnapping has happened. They, these kidnappers use technology. They use communicate. They use the uh, uh, communication devices. That means they are, they are operating with the times. Are our police operating with the times, or are we still using manual in a digital era? So our law enforcement agencies do not just need the moral support. They do not just need us as a community to support them, but I think they need the tactical and the uh, administrative as well as the other forms of uh, support in terms of equipment to allow them to execute their jobs professionally. So all in all, what we are saying is that let's all continue to be vigilant. The same advice that we have always shared, the same advice that we continue to dispense, stay aware, do not allow yourself to be drawn into places or situations with people that will lead you to be kidnapped. Always let no, somebody know where you are going, who you are with, and what time they should expect you back. That way, we might, uh, we might save lives. Lastly, but not the least, students, or is it students? In this case, nursing students, I don't know how people view you. I don't know if it's like nursing students are like the most vulnerable students. I don't know. Let's improve on our security consciousness. Students, ladies in general, I won't just leave it to nursing students. Ladies and students in general, let's improve on our security consciousness. And we are thankful that one of the heroes in the story of the discovery of faith and the other 12 was a nursing student it was a nursing student or is a nursing student kudos to you because that is where these kidnappers slipped up because one of them when they kidnapped her she had the sense to capture the number plate and the make of the vehicle and send the video to her friend before she even arrived at that house and i think that's where these guys sense to say they were not safe they had actually run away some hours before or is it a day before the police uh, came through and that's what led to to the security measures that put in place to be lax allowing that nurse to escape that house of horror and report or get help from our other hero robbie who we shall not forget and who we have to reward and now we have these young ladies safe and uh, obviously receiving their the medical they needed much needed medical support but much more has to be done so thank you very much for listening i'll keep you updated as news comes in about the whereabouts or is it the whereabouts of other uh, people that are being handed by the police uh, they are doing their own investigation some of you are saying it's beyond these three i also believe that there is a bigger and a deeper syndicate in this but let's leave it to the law enforcement agencies in time we will know who was behind this 
who sponsored this and who uh, came up with this kidnapping business in Zambia which is so alien to our society and our culture and which we must never ever tolerate. So thank you very much once again. Share this video and let's keep in touch. Good night and God bless. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.